there's an idea in the world and common in religion too that you should always have someone in your life, a close person, a friend that you can have this bond with because no one should be alone, no one is an island and all sorts of bad things happen as a result of that. And I consider myself blessed that I do have someone like that in my life. And that's my wife. It's amazing, actually, that we we agree on so much. I mean, I was going to say not just God. That doesn't sound right. But not only God. God is not the only thing we agree on. I mean, we agree on politics. and We agree on, on so many things. Family. We don't agree perfectly because we are our own individual people. But even the things we disagree on, most of them we're quite able to talk about and peaceably so and learn and understand from each other. I mean, that's that's a blessing, really. Seriously, it is. And, and, and I'm not knocking it if you have a friend that's like that, in addition to your spouse, or maybe you don't communicate with your spouse that way. And, and, and hey, at least you have this person. But they, they'll emphasize that you, you must have this person like that. Or, you know, bad things might happen idle mind, devil's workshop, all that stuff. And and I would agree with it to a certain extent with a caveat of, yeah, but you gotta have something in common with these people because, I mean, I was a loner all my life and there's only two times in my life where I was anything what you might call sociable. I was a, a, a few short years in the service and then a few years in religion. And the bond in the service with my friends what was alcohol basically and the bond in religion was was the religion and I was generally more sociable relatively speaking for myself I was much more sociable although probably not as much as most people but for my my track record so to speak for the previous 25 years or so since I left the military it was mind-blowing it was very expanding I was hugely sociable and but I had this one friend it's my closest friend and then when I found out everything about him and everything the friendship was based on was complete and utter lies it was a total just total fake and and meaningless and empty and nothing it was all based on the religion the religion took priority over anything the friendship might have there might be something of substance in the friendship, but it, uh, it would get trumped by the religion. And that's what I found out. And it's not that I was then scarred or anything. I just, you know, that's the reality of how it is with most of us. That's why friendships are so unusual. You know, true friendships where people can disagree and still talk about things and not completely exercise you from their life because now you disagree with this thing that, that they think you shouldn't believe. And I'm not saying there's, there should be no limits on this. I mean, if, if you believe that terrorism is right or something, you know, you, but if it's just a, a political difference or a, a doctrinal difference, that shouldn't be a reason to cut it off. But the thing is, like I say, it, it was never based on truth anyway, so it was inevitable. So now I, am, I have situation where I have this great gift. I have a wife who believes virtually like I do in, in everything. And, and where we don't understand each other, we're coming to understand each other more and more every day. She has people she can communicate with and her family on a regular basis and they do connect. There are certain things they can't talk about. But that's normal. That's normal with all of us. I have no one that I can connect with on any level whatsoever, anywhere except for her and and that's fine because like I say I have a track record of that of being basically content with that and then accepting whatever opportunities I get on whatever level they are and I understand a person can say well if, maybe if you were more vulnerable Mark and you were more open to it you would get that type of friendship that wouldn't backstab you and do such horrible things I disagree with that because people don't set out to backstab people they set out to be in agreement with you, but it's always with with their own their own standard or their own rules. And as long as you fit within those rules, they are fine with you and they will be true to you. 
It's just that when you break their rules, then that's it. You know, you you are persona non grata. They got to cut you loose. They got to slip the knife in the gut and twist it around. And that's that. And you don't really know that until you come to this challenge with this person. You really don't know that. So it's kind of like the previous thought I recorded today about uh, Dennis Prager making the statement that a person in a marriage has to know that divorce is over their head if they if they cross certain lines or else they won't behave themselves. You got to have that. You got to have that in the relationship. You got to have that in the friendship. You got to know that there's certain lines you don't cross. So it's all conditional. Everything is conditional. Because unconditional, I mean, my goodness, there'll be chaos. If you, if you know you're loved unconditionally, who knows what you do? Who knows what you'll believe? You might do something crazy and believe something you shouldn't believe or say something you shouldn't say. Because we're all just wild animals, I guess, just waiting to do crazy things when people give us the license through their love and acceptance. But anyway, that's, that's a little bit too sarcastic. Sorry about that. But, yeah, I just want to share that because... How many of us, or how many of you, should I say, are really more like me than you just don't know it because you always make sure you don't cross certain lines. You know, and I didn't cross those lines for many, many years. Oh, I shouldn't say many years. I said it was a few years in religion. It was 10 years. 10 years I had this friend. Some people call that a few. Some people call that many. For me, it was many. I understand a lot of people, they've had friends for 30, 40, 50 years. I, don't, I couldn't name people I knew 30, 40, 50 years ago. At least not most of them. Maybe one or two of them. But yeah, I had to regain my thought there. You, you, you might be more like me than you think because maybe you already have these boundaries and everything where, where you don't cross and, and they're regarding things that are important to you. They're important to you and you can't say them. You can't talk about them. You, you have this close, close friend that and you can't even say these certain things because that might damage your friendship and you just kind of accept it because that's just the way it is and you don't look at it like, wow, this person, if I told them this, they'd stab me in the back and throw me in a ditch. Like I'm basically saying here what happened to me because maybe I, maybe I have an unfair expectation that a friend should be able to do that. You know, maybe someone out there could correct me on that, straighten me out that really what's happening when you when you think that's what a friendship is about is you're being unreasonable in your expectations and or hopes of other human beings that you shouldn't expect people that you should know that when there's a sensitive issue you should never talk about it and I understand that that's that's one way of looking at it or just categorizing your friends you know here's level one and level two and level three and and here's superficial or or whatever and you just keep it on those levels it just it can surprise you sometimes when you think you can at least tap dance around something tiptoe around it gently and then you found out you've just done the cardinal sin you've done the unforgivable and and that's it and it's damaged forever because why because you shared something that in our case was the most important thing in our lives I was a representative of my wife and I, and I brought these new understandings we were coming to get, and we never even got to share them. We never even got to share them. We, we got as far as this is the most amazing thing that's ever happened to us. We are making contact with our God in a way that He is showing us things that we are understanding that we never understood before, and through several surveillance and spy operations, I guess th certain things were determined that we were believing with independent of us getting the opportunity to say what we believed and that was what happened and so here I am in the reality of what I think most of us really live whether we know it or not because really think about it, can you expose your soul to your deepest closest friend, isn't there something that's taboo with them, isn't there something with everyone you know no matter how much they love you, that if you said this one thing that's in your heart, that even if it's just a question, maybe you, you, you don't believe it, and you're not passionate about it, but you really think, oh, I, I'm really starting to wonder about this thing, you know? 
and you, and you realize, wow, if I said that to them, they might they might never look at me the same. They might not reject me or throw me aside and say I want nothing to do with you, but maybe they'll just say, you know, I don't know about that one. I don't know if I want to be as close with them. Which, again, is a human thing. I'm not criticizing it. Everyone has their limits. Like I say, I'm sure there's things people could say to me where I would just, like, boy, I don't know if I could ever look at you the same. It just seems odd to me that when it comes to 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 things regarding God, that's your creator, your best friend, your father, your maker, your lord, your brother, your creator, your teacher, your everything. And you have questions about that, that people will make that a dividing line. When you are sincerely trying to find out, because most people are, and just because we're sincere doesn't mean we come up, don't come up with wacky ideas. All of us come up with wacky ideas. That's why I, uh, I try not to be judgmental. Like I was saying to someone once who had become a vegetarian, I said, you know, I, I, you know they're having them over and I wanted to have a, a hamburger and I said, will you be offended if I do that? And, and she was like, well, why would I be offended for something I was doing five minutes ago? And it's cracked me up. It's my daughter, by the way, but, uh, and, uh, so I believe different things. So I disagree with myself vehemently and harshly. But I don't think of myself as a bad person who used to think those things. So why should I think of that of someone else who now thinks something differently? That's my way of saying, why should you think evil of other people who think differently now than they used to when all of us are that person? We've all thought differently than we used to think. Again. It goes to human nature. It's just something only God can change. But as long as we adhere to those rules and say, well, you got to know in the relationship that you can get fired at any time. Yeah, well, then that's what you're going to have. You're going to have that type of superficiality. But if you know, well, you got to know that your God loves you and he always will. And if you go off the rails crazy, at least there's, there's going to be one that's still going to be for you. It's going to be him. He's going to be there to help you no matter what. Even when you went off the rails... Even when everyone can't stand you, he's going to be there. And that's the type of love that teaches you to love and accept people, even when they're unlovable and almost impossible, or maybe literally impossible to accept. Having that one teaches you that. And you can be alone, and it's okay. You don't have to follow the rules of never be an island, because sometimes being an island is the answer. Because as long as you got a connection with him, He's going to guide you into the circumstances and situations you need to be in if you need to be in them. Because you're with him and you'll hear him. You'll understand him. You'll hear his voice. So he said, my, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. I'm one of his sheep. I hear his voice. I follow him. So it doesn't always look good because I don't follow the rules of men. But that's okay with me and it's okay with him. And I'm glad I know that. In Jesus' name. Amen.